The marathon draws tens of thousands of runners to the Big Apple. It means months of training and preparation for those involved and is seen by many as an inspiring event. Joining us now is physical therapist Dr. Karina Wu from Active Care Physical Therapy to talk more about how others might safely join in on the running fund. Welcome, Dr. Wu. Thanks for having me. So at this point, those running in the marathon pretty much know what to do, or we hope they do. But those of us who are inspired by that and want to try and hit the pavement as well, what are some good tips to start out on the right foot? Well, if you're going to start out to do any sort of endurance activity, you got to have a baseline level of strength mm -hmm. and stability. So a running program, you can start by increasing your mileages and following a mileage recommendation program, which is what the marathoners do. But also getting the appropriate clothing and footwear is important. Footwear because you're gonna create a lot of impact forces and joint compression. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the appropriate assessment for the foot type that you have. And then you wanna make sure that your clothing also will be appropriate for all the sweating. So moisture wicking, wicking as well as for temperatures. And as we get into the winter months and it's cooler, and I, I give anyone credit who gets out there and runs in the cold, what sort of gear should they be thinking about? They should definitely dress in layers because it's better to be a little bit warmer when you're starting your run versus feeling cold to start your run. So you want to make sure, again, that you have something that's going to be wicking so that your clothes don't get soaked with your sweat and you end up having a cold later or you also want something that's going to keep you warm and that's lightweight so that you're running a distance and not starting to get even more fatigue just because your clothing's a little bulky or heavy. And is there, <coughs> are there sort of exercises you should do to warm your body up uh, if you're hitting the road for the first time running? I mean, you can't just expect to run a two miles full speed, right? Yes. You definitely want to do dynamic stretching bef right before a run because that sort of mimics the movement of the body and brings circulation and stretches out the tissues. And then you want to make sure that you're doing some baseline strengthening and stability exercises because those help cushion the joint and help reduce compression in your joints. And so say you've hurt yourself, you've twisted an ankle or, or you're starting to feel pain somewhere in your knees or your hips or your feet. When do you know that it might be time to stop running? Or when is it just sort of the pains of, oh, you haven't worked this body part out in a while? So there's the normal aches and pains whenever someone takes on a new activity, but you really do need to listen to your body and be smart about it. So if something disappears after you've started running, it's pretty much okay to continue your run or your activity. If you feel an ache and pain while you're running and you can stop and stretch it, it's sometimes okay to continue, but again, listen to your body after your body has cooled down from that run. If something is sudden, sharp, or severe, or the pain persists, or the pain gets worse, you definitely need to stop and get it checked out because you don't want something that's going to make you miserable and not be able to participate or make your run uncomfortable or become catastrophic where it really sidelines you. Okay, so earlier in the show, we talked about how people are getting hip replacements younger and younger and we also did a piece a few months ago with you talking about how younger people millennials are getting arthritis and all of this has to do with the fact that we're involved in a lot of high impact sports at younger ages right so what can we do as people are aging and getting older and working out to better protect our joints as we're working out Cross training is a good idea. So if you are going to be doing different exercises, you're going to use the body differently and not put it through the same rigors of one particular movement. Uh, making sure that you stay flexible because keeping the muscles loose around a joint help reduce the compression and help reduce your potential to get arthritis. Mm -hmm. And making sure again that you're doing the appropriate strengthening and stability exercises around joints because the stronger the muscles are around a joint, the better they absorb the forces that crisscross through the joint. Awesome. And for those who don't love the pounding on the pavement, <coughs> what are some other good <laughs> exercises that are good on, good on your joints, keep your body healthy, but also give you that cardio 
boost workout. that you need, that workout you need. Yeah. yeah. So a cardiovascular activity is any sort of repetitive motion over a prolonged period of time. Running is the most high impact because nothing's in contact and you land and you basically absorb all your body forces plus gravity. So anything that can mimic a repetitive activity would be great, like an elliptical machine. That's actually the best to simulate running. Stairmasters, the bike, even though it's a little bit not so fun, mm -hmm. um, things like Zumba, but any sort of activity, even if you're doing calisthenics and you did them repetitively and without breaks, you're gonna turn it into an aerobic activity and not have the compressive forces in the joint, but still get the cardiovascular benefits. All right, Dr. Wu, thanks so much for those tips. Thank